nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare your living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free, and my shame is undone, your presence, Lord. Oh. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. Your
We want the news to be shouted and not whispered. Rejoice! God's Spirit is with us, uniting us in witness and worship in ministry and mission. Celebrate! Clap your hands and shout with joy! God, out of God's great love, has created you. Jesus Christ, out of his great love, has redeemed you. The Holy Spirit, out of great love, has lifted and inspired you to go out into God's great world. The Holy Spirit, out of great love, has lifted and inspired you to go out in peace and service throughout God's world. Proclaiming the good news of peace, love, and hope, and joy to all. Go in peace. Amen. 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 Oh, Amen. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for in that fact. terrible skill. <laughs> 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 we tried. We're nothing compared to the cops, and we certainly miss Tyler, and we certainly miss you all, uh, Clayton and Connor and Shelly, for being part of our skit. So today is definitely... Uh, a day that we remember you all because you're not with us in person, but you're definitely with us in spirit. And I know that Tyler is with us in spirit. I can feel his spirit with us tonight. So thank you. You've been a big part of this Saturday night church. We did our best though. So sorry <laughs> to disappoint y'all. <laughs> we tried really hard. We're going to go ahead and, and read the... Um, the Bible story, which comes from uh, the book of Acts, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, or really the Acts of the Holy Spirit, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. And this is the uh, Pentecost text that majority of the churches around the world who are covering the lectionary uh, will hear on this special weekend, Sunday, but today is Saturday. Okay, so this is called The Holy Spirit Comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying... Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven... When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Par oh, this is going to be hard. Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and, a and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. <clears throat> that was a lot. Lots of good words. Good job, Ms. Truly. Thank you. Yes, you did a great, great job. job. Woo! Okay. <laughs> All of it were pronounced accurately. Really? To, to, as far as I know. <laughs> I felt like I was in seventh grade uh, geography class. Again, <laughs> for a minute. We're yeah. in Libya. We're in Mesopotamia. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, you heard the text read. So, 
it's the, it's the day that the church celebrates Pentecost. Uh, Pentecost in the Old Testament, or really with the um, with the Jews, it is a celebration not just for Christians, but it was actually an original celebration with our Jewish brothers and sisters. Uh, duh, because Jesus and his disciples were Jews. <laughs> and so, um, but this celebration, this was a festival for uh, for them. It had been 50 days since the Passover. It's been 50 days for us for since the resurrection of Jesus. And so uh, the celebration is of when God gave uh, Moses the Ten Commandments. And so when Christians, when uh, the Holy Spirit had fallen on the house and had fallen on uh, the disciples, we gave it a new meaning. So now we have a new purpose, a new mission of going out and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. But the good news of it is that we don't have to do it alone. We can do it with the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's the good news of the day that we have been empowered by God, by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news. And we do not have to fear because we've got the Holy Spirit with us. So, um, so yeah, so what, what are your thoughts uh, or what questions or comments or reflections or prayer requests? Or donations you have for us. <laughs> well, when you just said, you know, I always go back to the child's perspective because uh, I teach children. And when you say Holy Spirit, I think of a ghost mm -hmm. and it scares me. But the irony is that the Spirit is here with us to comfort us and keep us from fear and keep us protected. So I remember hearing in church when I was little about the Holy Spirit and it kind of freaked me out and I was kind of scared and now as an adult I understand what that means but when I heard the word spirit I thought it was something to fear and it's exactly the opposite of that. I couldn't relate to that hearing uh, Bible stories. Uh, when I was a child and mm -hmm. like with the one with the fire on their head and everybody <laughs> Super I was scary. like that's I don't want that to happen that's, mm -hmm. that's a scary image to a child and like yes. with what she said with like the Holy Spirit you think that that's like a, a creepy image and in Acts 2 in what I just read um, talking about speaking in tongues everybody was talking mm -hmm. crazy and like fire was everywhere and it said the moon will turn to blood like that's very <laughs> intense and overwhelming to hear but like Miss Tiffany said it's just exactly the opposite as an adult you know that that's that means good things are coming yeah and right now we can hear the spirit thundering outside <laughs> but um but yeah that is very interesting you know but but there are definitely other spirits uh, other spirits that are not of God and so um, it is for us as um, as followers of Jesus to be able to discern what is the Holy Spirit and what is not uh, and if we follow the Ten Commandments and we follow in the footsteps of Jesus and understand what uh, he taught uh, the disciples and he taught people, uh, we would be able to discern what is the good spirit, what is the Holy Spirit, and what is not. Um, because otherwise, sometimes we could be misled, you know, by, uh, by some other force or by some other spirit. But with the Holy Spirit, there's nothing for us to fear. Uh, because the Holy Spirit is is for us you know it's like the uh, it's an advocate that can help us fight for us and uh, you know sometimes we're we're fearful of various life situations but that's what the whole the spirit is for you know the um, the spirit is there to inspire us you know those words uh, the the spirit uh, inspire 
all that comes from the same root word to inspire, uh, to encourage and to counsel and, and to comfort uh, and be our, our advocate that can represent us in whatever situation. You know, and that is a comforting thought to know, uh, because you know the the text said that um, that God had made the the promise through the prophet Joel in the Old Testament. You know that the the Spirit was going to come upon them, was going to be sent upon among the people of God, and and Jesus picked that theme up and. And continued on with promising about uh, the how the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, was going to be sent to the disciples. Because you know, it's for for me how relevant this text is. Um, because as as you know, um, we just lost Tyler. We just lost um, Tyler a week and a half ago, and and a week ago uh, we just celebrated his life. And we said, you know, our our final goodbyes uh, to to Tyler as we had laid him to rest um, here on Earth, but also being reminded um, that as Jesus went back to be with the Father, Jesus went back to to be with God. Um, you know, our faith tells us that that's where Tyler is as well. Um, and see the spirit of God right now thundering outside agrees with me. <laughs> but no, I, I do believe, um, you know, and, and that is our, our, our faith that reminds us um, of those who, and scripture reminds us that those who have died, that have died with, uh, uh, with Christ, in Christ, is in the kingdom. And that's where Tyler is. And that the spirit that is being sent to us, the spirit of God that, that Jesus had sent to be with the disciples, is being sent with for us today too. You know, so we can continue on um, living our faith and being able to share uh, that good news with with other people. And and for me, that's a comforting thought. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I, th I like that because think of like the scariest situation that you personally could go through or can imagine. But what's comforting about that is that no matter how hard it is, the spirit will always be there for you on the other side, waiting for you to push through mm -hmm. yes. and make it through whatever uh, obstacle you're trying to get through. No matter how difficult, he will always be on your side. And that's very comforting. Yes, very true. I miss Tyler, and I'm sure, you know, without a doubt, his family and his um, friends um, misses him as well. And so with, uh, with Jace, you know, and, and I believe that their spirits will always remain with us, you know, uh, will always remain with us. And, and every, every day, I always think of his face, you know, I see him. Um, and so, and, and those are comforting thoughts for me, knowing that he's always going to remain with me in my heart and in my memory and um, the life that he has shared um, with, and especially being a part of this Saturday service. So it is a bit emotional, uh, a bit difficult for us to sit here and, and try to have our first Saturday, um, for our first Saturday night church without the cause. But we're hopeful that uh, perhaps Clayton and Connor uh, can can fill in the gap with Shelly as well. That uh, that perhaps when you're when you're ready, you let us know. Tyler was very spirited. Yes, speaking of the Holy Spirit. And very most powerful. certainly. Yeah he yes. was. He was that kid. I think that um, you know the one comfort that I saw during this tragic situation was going to Tyler's uh, and Jace's candlelight vigil. Yes. And when we were leaving and walking away, I just see a parking lot full of ch children, of, of kids, of youth, um, Tyler's age, um, all, all his friends, Jace and Tyler's friends, and seeing those <laughs> Seeing those children come together and hear the word of God 
even though the circumstances were tragic mm -hmm. that brought them there i know that tyler for sure would be comforted and happy knowing that god's word was being spread and i hope that any of tyler's friends that have grown deeper in their faith or committed to a relationship with god through this and because of this would share that with his family because that's the greatest gift that he could give anyone is to share the gift of God and he can he's still doing that today oh yeah absolutely mm -hmm. uh, absolutely and you see the number of people that even showed up at the uh, the stadium on Saturday um, to remember you know, to remember Tyler. I didn't have the opportunity to attend uh, Jace's service, but I'm, I'm very certain that, that it was filled as well with his friends and the community of, of Taylor. But I do know that um, in times like this, when tragedy, um, you know, comes to us, that strikes us, it, we come together as a people of God, as a community, and we support one another. And I know that within our our uh, our time, our grief, that the Holy Spirit is with us. And so the Holy Spirit coming, um, you know, from God and is God, uh, but also the spirits of our loved ones, like Tyler's spirit. I definitely I felt Tyler's spirit. I don't know if you were there on Saturday, but that wind, boy, that wind that blew through, that was all Tyler. <laughs> that, blew, that blew through and, and it just wrecked his own stage. <laughs> that was all Tyler is doing, I believe. That was the spirit. Uh, but 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 yeah, but in, in a very good way to remind us of his presence that he hasn't left us, that he hasn't abandoned us. We may not be able to see him physically anymore, uh, but his spirit is definitely with us, and it is up to us to keep it alive, you know, as it is up to us to keep God's spirit, Holy Spirit, alive. It is also up to us to keep the spirits of those who have touched us and have been a part of our lives to keep it alive by um, by continuing to share their messages of hope, uh, their messages while they were with us, you know, during their short uh, time um, that they had been with us. Or if it's our loved ones that lived a full life, you know, the, the, um, the many lessons that we've learned with, from them over time. That wind was very comforting to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that is. It, it really it really was and I felt like um, whenever someone would speak a little long and I felt like I spoke a little long as well the wind would blow, blow through and I felt like it was Tyler's doing because he wanted you to cut it off hurry up <laughs> in a way but um, but we laugh about it today but uh, in a good way because we do remember and we miss we miss you, Tyler, uh, and I do believe that you can hear us. Just know that we miss you terribly, and um, we appreciate every way uh, that you have touched us, uh, our Saturday night church, our youth, our community. Um, you have definitely left your mark here um, in, in the church and in our lives. So I hope... Um, if the if uh, if the cops are are watching this, just know that um, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the spirit of Tyler will always be with you, and be comforted in knowing that. And we will all get through this together. In time. We have to. We have work to do for God. That's right. <laughs> Because I can just imagine, you know, uh, when the disciples had lost Jesus, they were going through a pretty rough time as well. Mm -hmm. But they did get through it um, as well because that was a tragedy for them. That was a trauma, you know, for for them to uh, watch their Savior executed on a cross. That's a brutal death. And so, um, imagine how scared they were. 
-hmm. Like the scared, they're so scared of the unknown. And I, I was thinking about that the other day. I feel comforted that like, I know where Tyler is. Yes. They didn't know where Jesus was going. They, he told them mm -hmm. I'm going and they didn't <laughs> believe him, but we, now we know. Yeah. And we can be comforted in that. Yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, I, I just want to say that I, I do believe that with our faith, our Christian faith, it definitely helps us in times um, like this. And um, I'm hoping that, that other people who may be going through a difficult time, um, may be going through some struggles and challenges in life, that you too um, can find a church uh, near you and find a community uh, near you that can encourage you and support you uh, through whatever challenges that you are going through that you're facing, that you find um, the, the people in the church that can help you during this time. I can't imagine going through grief like this without God, mm -hmm. without knowing, you know, that Tyler's in heaven He's in the arms of Jesus, and we will all see him again one day. I can't imagine being a person on this earth and not having that hope and faith. And I I just, my heart breaks for people that don't have that. I, I don't know how they cope at all. Right. Yeah, and I, and I keep thinking back, you know, on, I mean, it, you know, tra tragedies, it's, it's, something that you never want to go through but unfortunately it um, more people go through it than we know mm -hmm. um, but I keep reminding myself you know of, of various passages within the, the Bible within scripture that always reminds us that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord um, and so you know that that is a reminder uh, that once we die, we're, we're, we are with God. And so that is, uh, that is our, our faith that tells us that. But, uh, but we do thank you so much for joining us this evening for our Saturday night as we talk about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, and um, how we have been dealing with this tragedy and how we have been dealing with grief because, um, you know, uh, if you have not dealt with something like this before with death, uh, you probably will in, um, in the future. Uh, and I just want to want you to know um, that God loves you and that if you are able to find a church near you, I would encourage you to find one who can support you during times um, like this. And I've only shared this with a couple of people, but um, my, my parents lost my, um, my I had a 17 year old brother. He died on Memorial Day and it was a, a, a tragic accident. And so, um, but my parents did, you know, deal with it as best as they could. Um, I was very little then at the time we, we were living in Hawaii. Um, but it's, like I said, it's a tragedy strikes more people than we know. But it's how um, hopefully there's a group of people or church that can support you during the difficult time. And, and things unexpected that happens. But with that, uh, y'all want to add anything else to close us out with? Before, uh, Tiffany, did you want to close us out in prayer? Or uh, Julia wants to close us out in prayer? I can pray. Yes. All right. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to celebrate your church and the gift of the Holy Spirit that you have given us. Thank you for this gift during this difficult time, Lord, where we mourn the loss of one of our church family, and we do our best to support the family that is grieving so much as we grieve with them. Lord, keep your spirit with us.
Help us to listen and to do your deeds through the Spirit and to always recognize your presence in our life, Lord, and share it with others. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we do want to thank uh, Stephanie for singing our song, uh, Holy Spirit, You Are Welcome Here. Anytime, any day, any place, you are welcome. Amen. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us on this Saturday Night Church. We hope that you will tune in again next week. God bless you.